Toward the end of last year, it was announced that Nikita Mazepin would drive for the Haas Formula 1 team for the 2021 season. It was clear as day that he forked out millions to make it all possible, and his antics in that year's F2 championship had many people questioning whether he even deserved to be anywhere near a Formula 1 car. However, in that video I produced commenting on his signing, I mentioned that he was a decent driver when he wasn't being a dick, and that, provided he stopped acting like an unsavory piece of pig sh that it was worth giving this dude a chance. Well, here we are some 8-9 months later and a lot of stuff has happened since then and not a lot of it good in fact a lot of it was fucked up By the way, before I start this video, if this thing gets a million views within a week of release, I'll dead ass buy this dude's racing suit. I don't need it, nor do I really want it, but it's F1 memorabilia, I'm a sucker for that sh and I love doing stupid stuff. Right, anyway, when the curtain had fallen on last year's F2 championship, Mazepin had finished P5 in the standings with two wins to his credit, and not a hell of a long way down on the winner of the championship and future F1 teammate, Mick Schumacher. By this stage, it was already announced that Mazepin would be driving for Haas in 2021, although for a couple months leading up to it, it was one of the worst kept secrets in the paddock, which is why I was accepting of the fact that we were going to have to put up with this dude whether we liked it or not, so long as, you know, he kept out of trouble. Uh, you know, and this was when I released the video on December 3rd. Bruh. So six days later, he posted a video on Instagram which showed him groping a woman in the back of a car. I won't show the footage because if you haven't seen it, you really don't want to, and if you have seen it, why the f do you need to see it again? This evoked a major uproar online, with people calling for action to be taken against him. Thousands upon thousands of people had signed petitions to have him removed from the Haas F1 seat. The We Say No to Mazepin movement was formed, and pressure was put on Haas to take action against him. After all, this is PR damage that they really can't afford, and it's only right that they take action in this circumstance, right? Well, yeah, nah, they kind of swept it under the rug. Although, they did make mention that they were working with him to help make him a better human being, I suppose. The woman in the video had come out in defense of Nikita, saying that it was just a joke between them that really didn't mean much, and that he was a good person, and that he would never do anything to hurt or humiliate her. And Mazepin apologized on Insta, saying that he's got to hold himself to a higher standard, and that he promised to learn from this. And that's all very well and good, except there were a couple things amiss about this. Firstly, that apology he posted, it was deleted nine days after the fact, and the girl involved in this whole deal has since been posting stuff that suggested that maybe it wasn't a joke after all. Well, how this whole deal was handled was a joke, but hey, he was never going to get the boot from the team given the certain degree of influence, shall we say, and so heading into the new season, I was kind of prepared to see whether he was willing to change his ways and be a new man and build schools and hospitals and all that other good jazz. We do need to learn about forgiveness in the sport. I mean, after all, Jesus does race in it. And so came the preseason testing in Bahrain. This dude demonstrated throughout the entire three days that he had little in the way of on-track respect, and I'm not talking about the fact that he spun 80 million times. You would expect a few spins from a no matter how good they are, and especially given the car handled like it was in the third stage of syphilis, these spins are understandable, but it was his attitude on track that suggested that he really didn't give a shit about those around him. Now, as someone who has a sum total of no minutes behind the wheel of a Grand Prix car, I am in no way qualified to tell you this, but I do have a moderately successful YouTube channel and an ego with its own gravity field, so you're going to have to run with it. And it was through these spins that he inherited the nickname, Mazaspin, which I'm not going to lie, got really old really freaking fast. But he was lying in his own filth, and it really was just a piss take, so I don't know, some people may need to lighten up a little bit here. But hey, let's skip ahead to the first round of the season, to the Bahrain Grand Prix. With the experience that he had at the circuit from pre-season testing, it would have been an easier experience for him to hit the ground running. Problem is that he didn't really. He qualified 8 tenths slower than his teammate, which, yeah, nah, that's not exactly ideal. Especially given that Mick Schumacher is a bit of a late bloomer in whatever category he gets into. But that wasn't quite as unideal as what happened during the race. He negotiated turn 1 fine, turn 2 was okay too. But then at turn 3, he lost control and dead. This was obviously not according to the plan set up by Haas, or specifically Gunter Steiner, who was now thinking, Why the fuck did I play Squama and Kevin with this Franco? The next race at Imola did give him a chance to put all of that behind him, but aside from the on track errors which were definitely present in this round, there was also the slight issue of, well, annoying everybody. <laughs> Idiot. This guy's a idiot, like. Oh, these bloody idiots. What's the people never change? Instead of finishing the lap and getting out of the way, it's two. Two turn one in front of you. This guy. 
This, as you can tell, was a common theme throughout the year. Although, I will say that this has been an issue at Haas for years. Their engineers seem to go off in la-la land whenever it comes time for traffic management. Qualifying comes around, and he's half a second down on Mixter. And he would finish a long way down the road, having struggled badly throughout the race. He was also involved in a prank with Nicholas Latifi, but in fairness to Mazepin, that really wasn't his fault. Portugal was a little bit better, closer to Mick, but still half a second behind in qualifying. This wasn't really improving for a few rounds, although in Monaco, he did show signs of improvement, bettering Schumacher's pace throughout the weekend on the lead up to qualifying. Having said that, one of those drivers was significantly faster than the other during the race. I needn't tell you which one it was. The both of them almost had a big accident in Baku after this late defensive maneuver on Mick. This really didn't win much praise from Mick and questions were once again laid at the feet of Mazepin. So now we're like, what, seven Grand Prix into the championship and we've had like, well, all that we've had from Mazepin here. And even for the next few rounds, while there was definitely some improvement, he was still significantly down on Mixter. And that remained the case for the next few rounds, so... He's useless then, right? Worst rookie in years, yeah? Well, not so fast on that one, because there are a couple things to consider here for a moment. The first is that while Mazepin has spun a million times and caused a lot of damage to his car, Mick hasn't been immune from these shenanigans either. He himself has caused a lot of damage to the cars and made similar mistakes to what Mazepin has. This ain't just down to the drivers, it's predominantly because the car is a cow on ice. So, playing devil's advocate here, if we're gonna give a driver grief over throwing their car into the wall, in this case, the other side of the garage should share some of the blame. The other thing is that Mazepin Mazepin has apparently been running around with a heavier chassis. They haven't disclosed exactly how much heavier it is. And there really isn't any confirmation of how much time he's losing to Mick. But in this game, that sh does matter. So fair enough, heavier chassis probably does explain some of this stuff. However, Steiner has explained that they have swapped chassis around on several different occasions. So who the hell are we meant to believe? The son of an oligarch or Steiner? And if we're going to get picky about the hindrances in the cars, Mick has been driving around with a crooked seat. Honestly, I don't know what to expect heading into the remainder of the season. But we are stuck with this dude because Dimitri Mazepin has the wherewithal to keep his son in Formula 1 to potentially purchase a whole F1 team and make YouTubers who badmouth him and his ventures disappear. And we better hope he does actually improve as a driver and as a person. Mainly because whether you hate him or you hate him, like I said, he's going to be around for a while. With Cash being king in the sport. This driver is going to be stuck to the grid like a well-worn piece of roadkill. In terms of his outright speed, he has demonstrated some of that in the junior series in the past, albeit perhaps with a little bit of internal driver coaching on the side. But if he does end up getting onto mixed pace, or even bettering it going forward, we got to acknowledge that. As a person, the ball's in your court on that one. I won't tell you how to judge a person. I just tell you how sh they are at driving. Is Mazepin in that special club of crappy driving? Going by the first few rounds, uh, yeah, he was garbage. But he could very well improve in the coming rounds. What, with a new shot? his natural move to improve on his rough edges and so on. Or I may be totally wrong and he may forever be in limbo. Although something he absolutely needs to work on is that whenever a car is coming up to lap him, get out of the freaking way. Anyways, thank you all for watching. Drop a comment below, subscribe to the channel if you're awesome and always remember, keep it respectful, be wholesome, don't be a manus and as always, I'll see you all later.